By my thinking, we've only got seven weeks left until Christmas. Yeah, this year's almost gone. It, almost. But I've still got some unfinished projects. And I don't want to go into this new year with unfinished projects still hanging over my head from the previous year, like some dark cloud. So for the next seven weeks, I'm going to make a big push and I'm going to try to wrap up some projects. And I got two big ones we're going to talk about today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the projects, explain what I've got to do, why I'm doing it. And then each week I'm going to post an update where I'm at, show you what, what I'm getting done that day, and then talk about what's next. And what I'm hoping, I'm hoping all of you are going to hold me accountable and make sure I get this done. This is the first project. This is a 2002 Chevy Tahoe, and I bought it in 2009, and this has been a great vehicle. I've had it for 13, almost 14 years now. Wonderful vehicle. But at the end of 2019, it had gotten to the point where it needed a lot of repairs. Nothing major, but a lot of minor things, and it was to the point that the repairs were actually going to cost more than this is worth. So what I decided was I just wanted a truck. And I figured I'd get a Chevy Silverado about the same year as this, take the money I was going to put in the repairs, use that to get the truck, and then just keep this for parts for the truck. It's needing the repairs. This wasn't worth anything, or very little. But to have this for parts for the truck, it, it would be worth a good bit for me, or save me money in the long term. That's a good plan. And then I started looking for a truck, and... That was early 2020, and all of y'all know what happened then. <laughs> yeah, that plan went to pieces quick. So this has just been sitting here ever since. I got to do something with it. And at the same time, price of trucks now, new trucks, used trucks, I'm just not willing to pay what they're asking. My vehicles work for me. I don't work for my vehicles, and if I was to buy one now, I'd be working for it. And on the, the used ones, I'm not willing to pay what they're asking for a 20-year-old truck on the older ones. They're still too expensive. All right, but I still need a backup vehicle. This isn't my daily driver. All right, and I need something to tow the second project with. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so for the next seven weeks, I'm going to get busy on this one, and I'm going to get this one in good working condition. First, I'm going to clean it up. I need a new battery, I need new tires, I need an intake manifold gasket, a rear main oil seal, a new power or cable for the power window on the passenger side. And then next year I'll look at painting or something like that. I just want to get it in good working order for now. And then there's other minor little things I could still do to it, but those are the major ones just to get it ready to put it back on the road. And this is my second project. And those of you that have followed my other channel, y'all have seen my adventures with this boat thus far, and it has been an adventure. It needed a lot of repairs when I bought it. I get minor stuff, nothing major, but just a lot of little things. And keep in mind, used vehicle prices aren't the only thing that went up from all this craziness we got. Price of boats went through the roof. I had a 2002 bass boat nice boat. I sold it in 2009. Had a 150 on the back. And I looked that boat up recently just to see what it was worth now. That boat is worth significantly more now than it was when I sold it in 2009. And when I say significantly, I mean quite a few thousand dollars. Right. When I saw that, that's when I realized just how bad our economy is and just how bad things are getting quick. Old boats and trucks don't go up in value. They don't appreciate, they depreciate, or at least they're supposed to. When we start seeing them appreciate, something's wrong, seriously wrong. All right, well, they're still quite expensive. And so is having these worked on, and I carried this to a mechanic as soon as I got it, and had him go through it, and the major stuff's okay, compression's good, and, and he started working on it, but I liked the guy, he was a good mechanic, he, he was honest and I appreciated that. And he didn't come out and tell me, but he, he let me know that with all the little things this boat needed here, I wasn't going to be able to afford to have him do it. Just, 
bottom line. And I mean, I could, but it's, I was gonna end up paying him way more than this was worth. I could just go buy another boat that didn't need as much work for what it's gonna cost to pay him to do the repairs on this. Right? So I've been doing repairs on this since, and I'm not a boat mechanic, right? but I'm digging into it anyway. And I've got quite a few things left to do on this one. Right? And let's step into the shop and I'll show you exactly where I'm at right now. This is my lower unit for the boat. Yeah, we got some work to do. But it's like the Tahoe, it's nothing major, just a lot of little minor things that need to be done. And for the boat, I need to change the stator. And that stator's working, but based on the advice of an experienced boat mechanic who told me in no uncertain terms to change the stator, I'm gonna change it. Okay, and then I've already done a lot of work to the fuel systems. Matter of fact, I just finished rebuilding the carburetor, so we can scratch that off the list as far as did need this rebuilt. Got the seal kit for it. It was not difficult. It's a very simple carburetor. I need to change all of the seals in the lower unit. I need to move my transdu transducer, raise it up. I need to change the seals in my hydraulic cylinder for the trim and tilt. And I need to pull the bottom of the boat out so I can get to the floor and braze up the stress cracks in the aluminum hull. And with that, the boat should be in really good shape. And for the boat and the Tahoe, I'm going to run into some little things, hoses and things like that as we go, but those are the major things I got to get done. And that's my goal is to get on top of that and get them done. And I've got a lot of other projects. Mrs. River would have no problem right now coming up with a list of things that unfinished projects around the house I need to get done. And I've got several projects for the other channel we're going to work on, but for this channel, for this, I want to get these done now while I can still get the stuff to do the repairs. we got a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, supply chain and we're experiencing the end of an era. I mean, that's just bottom line. And there's a guy, Peter Zahan, and I'll leave a link below to some of his videos, or one of his videos, and you can go to his channel and check him out. He's an analyst, super sharp guy. I don't know if what he's saying is how it's going to play out. He's saying it's in the globalization. He explains why and gets into demographics and so forth. And he's basing all of this just on obvious facts. I like what he's got to say. I like how he presents it. Right. But I think it's clear to all of us that the world is fracturing as far as trading partners. I mean, we see the tensions between us and China, between the West and China. And this is coming down to West versus East. All right, so you got the Western nations, United States, all the Commonwealth nations in Europe. And then you've got the Eastern nations. You've got India, Russia, China. And Brazil seems to be falling in line with the Eastern nations or forming alliances with them. It's restructuring of things right now. All right, so yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of bad things are happening as far as trade. Right, so with the end of globalization and our supply chains having been built like they have been for the past 20, 40 years, we're going to have some disruptions. Now, I'm not saying this is the end of the world, civilization's going to collapse. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying there's a lot going on, and I want to get these things functioning and running and functioning properly while I can get the parts to do it. Because with supply chain stuff, who knows what... You know, it's coming along shortly. And that's another thing about my old truck and my old boat. The carburetor was simple. It's mechanical, it's easy to work on. Okay, with so much now being electronic, and the new stuff's nice when it works. The problem's when it breaks. And most of you rely on warranties. Most of you, you're in debt up to here, you got payments on your truck, payments on your boat, payments on your house, payments on everything going and coming. And if 
something broke and you had to pay what it really cost to get it fixed, you'd be in trouble. All right, because the repairs now are absolutely stupid as far as what they cost. And I don't fault the mechanics. They got to make money just like the rest of us. I, hey, I'm on their side. I, they earn their money. All right, but then if we look at what it costs to have a truck repaired now, look at a lot of the, the Ford diesels. Ever since, I don't know, mid 2000s, somewhere in there. If you want to work on a Ford truck, especially diesel, the engine, they have to pull the whole cab off of the truck to get to the engine. <laughs> now, us out in our backyard, we're not pulling the whole cab off the truck. So we gotta pay somebody to do it, and they're gonna charge a lot to do it, and that's a lot for them to have to go through just to get to the engine. All right, well, boats, that same with boats now. They're not designing this stuff for us to be able to work on it. They don't want us working on it. And if you do, it voids, voids the warranty. <laughs> And if most of us, if we had to pay for a new power head for our boat, if we didn't have a warranty, that boat's probably going to sit there for a few years because most of us can't pay what it costs to have a power head fixed. If it wasn't for the warranty, we'd be in trouble. Well, the way I look at it right now for the world, the warranties are all running out. Okay, those warranties were just pieces of paper and agreements to make you feel better about the future. Yeah, go ahead and get up to debt in here and just sign right here. And if you have any problems, we'll take care of it. You won't have to worry about a thing. All right now, everything's falling apart. And the electronic stuff, like I said, that's nice when it's working. What happens when that computer chip breaks and you can't get a new computer chip? Think about that one. Okay, how many of the products do we have right now? then in five years, they're not going to be working. Okay, and back to the whole everything's changing. This is the end of an era. U.S., United States, right now, we've got a 25-day supply of diesel fuel. That's it. Now, that doesn't mean we're running out of diesel fuel in 25 days. That's not what that means. It just means our supply level's really low. Matter of fact, it's the lowest it's been since 2005, maybe. I don't know, it might have been the 90s, I forget, but it's, it's we're, we're not in good shape as far as supply. Well, the reason for that is not because we don't have the oil in the United States, well, we've got plenty of oil. We don't have the refineries. We don't have the capacity at the refineries to produce all of the oil and diesel and so forth we need. Well, not oil. Oil goes to the fine refineries and then it gets turned into gasoline and diesel and so many other products. Our refineries are, they're old, they're dying. They're not building new ones. Why would they? I mean, every, the government's already said so many years, we're going all electric. You're not going to need gasoline. You're an oil company. It costs you a billion dollars to build up a refinery and it takes you at least 10 years before you get your money back and start making a profit. The governments came out and said, we're getting away, we're doing away with gasoline, we're going all electric. The car companies have said, we're going all electric. Would you build a new refinery if you were oil company? Would you invest any money in updating your existing refinery? No. All right. We're not going all electric either, by the way. That's just a, a, a fairy tale that some really stupid people have told themselves and they started believing it. We'll be walking, literally, we'll be walking and on bicycles before we go all electric if they get rid of fossil fuels right now. We just, it's not possible. We don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the raw materials. And then what I just said about the end of globalization, all right, China's no longer going to be making our stuff, or slowly going to be not making our stuff. We don't have steel mills here anymore. We're great in the U.S. at recycling steel, but we don't have any mills, steel mills for creating new steel.
We buy all that from overseas, places like China. All right, so a lot of changes going on right now. I want my stuff working. And as far as everything I just said, I, I have no clue what's going to happen next week, much less next year, five years after that. I have none. I just see our country, things are falling apart. They're starting to not work, and that's because in the past, our whole system was based on competency. If you wanted to run a company, you had to go build the company yourself, start it, create it, the business. You had to make it profitable. You had to manage it. You had to put out a product, a service that people needed, used, and you had to compete with other companies, and you had to do a better job in order to succeed. You had to be competent. If you wanted to get a promotion at the power company, you, you had to be competent in your job and be able to keep the electricity going. It's not about competency anymore. Now it's about politics. Just get elected. You, you don't even have to be able to change the light bulb. You just go get elected. <laughs> That's where we're at now. And then the politicians can tell the corporate boards of, and the the boards of incompetent people that are just like the politicians, that they got elected to the boards. The politicians tell them, hey, we need to get rid of fossil fuels. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll get rid of fossil fuels. That's to save the planet. They don't have a clue what they're doing. They live in a completely different world than reality. I said, you know, I have no idea what the future holds. See where it's going, and it's, it's not good. So I want my stuff running. I want it working. I want to go into the first of this year with my these old projects wrapped up. I want everything organized, and I want to go fishing this spring. I'm not doing this because I'm scared of what's coming. I'm doing this because while it's all falling apart, I want to go fishing. <laughs> it doesn't take much to go fishing. A rod and reel. The hooks, you know, some bait. You can go catch your own bait. Now, the boat's nice, but it requires gasoline. So assuming I'm getting gasoline, we'll be in the boat. But you ain't got to have a boat. There's a creek right down the road. We, you know, we be out there and go catch fish. They just ain't going to be big ones. So we don't need much to go fishing. But I want my stuff working and lasting, and I want to enjoy it as long as I can. So that's where I'm focusing on, what I'm focusing on, and I encourage all of you, while I'm doing this, think about your own projects that you might want to get ready and things you want to make sure is in proper working order right now while you can. Okay, and for those of you that aren't mechanically inclined, don't worry about it. I don't know what I'm doing either, but we're going to do it anyway. So next week I'll give you an update on what we got done, I'll show you what I'm working on that day, and then figure out what next. And this week for Tahoe, I want a battery in it. I'm going to check on the tires. I'm going to wash it today. We're going to start there for the boat. I'm waiting on seals right now. I'm going to go ahead and get the carburetor put back in there. That shouldn't take me about 15 minutes. I've ordered the new seals. They're in the mail. I'm going to have to get a puller, gear puller to get this bearing assembly here out but then we'll get all the seals changed here and something else as far as doing things yourself. I have got sand all piled up here on top of this. Now I ain't got a clue why. I just know it ain't good. Now it's not down in the gears. This is sealed off from the gears below. There should be sand piled up here like this. I, I've been running in a clean lake. I mean, I might've got shallow a few times and kicked up some sediments. I don't know, but when we get this back together, we get it right. I don't expect to see no sand next time I pull this out. And for those of you with the boat, it's the impeller right here. All right, so by me being able to take the lower unit off, and I've never done this before. Again, I'm not a boat mechanic. By me being able to pull this lower unit off myself, which is actually pretty easy, and I'll show y'all me putting it back. Now I can change my own impeller, which means I don't have to take my boat in to get it serviced every year or every other year to have this changed. 
I just saved myself a lot of money by just learning how to do this simple little task. All right, tune in next week and we'll go from there. God bless and y'all have a great day.